Shalom, shalom, shalom. This is Rabbi Moshe Otero with the Ways of Israel. This morning we're continuing with the series of the Letters for the Ages by, by Rabbi Nachman, uh, Nachmanides. And we are on chapter or video 13 in the series. So we are going to take a look at, in, in fact, the world to come. Um, and what he develops in chapter 13 is then the Spirit of God's presence will rest upon you, as will the splendor of his glory, and you will live the life of the world to come. And he begins to develop this, uh, the world to come in this world. Keep in mind, it's not only the other world, but this world. This is perhaps the most intriguing statement that the Rambam's letter makes, and here the author holds a glimpse of the entirely new level of life in other worldly existence, which one can actually experience here on earth. The whole idea of Judaism is that we have heaven here on earth, making this world into the world to come. In Yiddish, it is known as the Olam Haba Oy De Velt, the world to come in this world. In Psalms 27, verse 4, King David writes, One thing I asked of the Lord, that I shall seek, that I dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life. According to the Rambam, that's Maimonides, Helikot Teshuvah, chapter 8, verse 4, the house of the Lord does not refer to a place in this world, but rather to the bliss of the world to come. The Harav Mordecai Gifter, Shlita, asks, If this phrase... Olam Habam refers to the hereafter. How can David ask to dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life? Quote unquote. And during his mortal existence, Rav Gifter thus cites as proof that the words of the letter of Ramban that one perfects his personality can experience the delight of the world to come during his lifetime as well. In other words, by you working on your your, your character traits in your aspect with your relationship with God here now, you can come to experience the world to come here and now. Transcending that trivial. How does one get there to Olam Haba or experience Olam Haba? The Ramban maps the route earlier in his letter. And this is the key is self-discipline, refinement of character. One who trains himself to be gentle. <coughs> Excuse me. Train themselves to be gentle and humble and at peace with the world rises above the trivial pursuit which binds the common man, inspired by fear of God. And this person lives a life unparalleled in quality. Although his feet are planted on the ground, his heart and his mind soars to effortless heights. The Ramban, Nachmanides, alludes to this goal elsewhere in his writings. In his commentary on the verse, Love the Lord your God and walk in his ways and cling tightly to him, Deuteronomy chapter 11, verse 22, the Ramban explains that when a person is filled with the love of God, he thinks about him always, even when seemingly involved in the mundane pursuit of life. He who loves God will allow himself to be distracted. He speaks business with his tongue and lips while his heart remains concentrated elsewhere upon his loved or beloved creator. People of stature bind their souls even while they walk on earth to the bound of eternal life and their bodies become a palace for the divine presence. Glimpsing the divine. Rabbi Yaakov Yeshia. Carl, it's the Chazonish, paints a poetic portrait of spiritual heights that one can reach even when he succeeds in transcending the mundane. In his treatise of Emunah u Betachon, chapter 1, section 9, he writes, When a person elevates himself to the point that he's able to truly sense the presence of the Almighty, the Almighty God, he is filled with an ecstasy which has no bounds. His soul basks in delight as earthly desires simply become unimportant. He delicate, his delicate soul is wrapped in the sacred embrace. 
When a mortal enters the realm of sanctity, a new world opens before his eyes. One can live in this world and yet, actually for a brief period, experience angelic ecstasy. All mundane, mundane pleasures melt in nothingness in the face of his celestial bliss. There is no greater testimony to the divine origin of man than this unique encounter of the soul with his spiritual source. Elsewhere, the Chazon Ish repeats this idea in a letter. When one is privileged to know the Torah, his intellect, like a seed in the furrow of a field, unites with his knowledge and thus becomes, and they become a single entity, one. His walk among the people seems to be superficial, observe it to be an ordinary person. In truth, however, he is an angel dwelling among mortals. He lives a life of spiritual ecstasy that is exalted above all praise. Kovetz Igarot Chazon Ish, chapter 1, verse 13. The Maharala Prague, the Siva Solam Bitachon, chapter 1, demonstrates how a person can live in Olam Haba while dwelling in this world. The key, he writes, is his intense faith, Emunah. The prophet cried out to Israel, Place your trust in Hashem, in the Lord, forever and ever. For the Lord is the sheltering rock of both worlds. Isaiah 60, 26, verse 4. The Talmud in Menachot 21b derives from this verse, The person who places his complete trust in the Lord will merit God as his protection, both in this world as well as in the world to come. This means that even if one was originally destined to suffer in this world, the decree only remains as long as a person perceives himself to be under the control of physical forces. The God-fearing person, however, sees the forces of nature are lifeless tools in the hands of the Creator who controls everything. This bitachon, this trust, literally lifts man's man of faith out of this world. He enters entirely in a new sphere of existence, not unlike the world to come. This God-fearing person appears to be no different than the masses of humanity, yet in reality he is entirely separated from them. He is surrounded by an otherworldly glow which shields him from the vicissitudes of mundane life. This is what King David meant when he sang, You are shelter for me. From distress you preserve me. With glad song of rescue you envelop me. Selah. Many are the agonies of the wicked, but he who trusts in the Lord, kindness surrounds him. Psalms 33, verse 7 and 10. A parting blessing. The Talmud in Berachot 17a relates how the sages would bless one another at the conclusions of their study. And they would say, Olamecha tiraecha beachecha vearachetecha lechai shalom haba. May you see your world in your lifetime, and may the conclusion of your life lead you on to the world to come. This is, this, this is the meaning, is this, that may you now apply the lessons you have just studied for your everyday life, so that you will experience the bliss of the world to come within your lifetime on earth. May this prepare you for your final reward when you will be completely enter the world to come. And these are the words of how you can tap into the world to come, living here and working on yourself to be a better human being, a better Jew, a better person in this life. This becomes the reason why we study and we learn to make ourselves better, to leave a, a legacy of good for others. And this is also your encommendation, your mission in life. Not just to say, well, my father was, my brother was, my sister was. No, but are you? Of course, this study is being dedicated to my three sons, and Mayor David. Joshua and David Joseph. May all three follow the ways of the Lord in all of their ways, trust in him, and as I have drilled in your head, and he will direct your path. Shalom, shalom.